What's going on guys, Gaston right here and let me continue reporting on the Sony ZV E10 and I'm looking at this post that Sony Alpha Rumors uh, posted today, I believe it was. And right now we actually can see what this camera looks like and um, you know, I'm actually filming a video for you is the FX3 versus Sony a7 III and why I don't consider the FX3 a cinema camera. So stay tuned for that one. But anyway, took a pause because I really wanted to chat with you guys about this camera. As you guys know, this camera has been delayed. It was supposed to be announced on July 7th. But let's actually take a look at these images right now because a lot of things that we were talking about or wondering now they are confirmed after we see these images. So the first image shows actually the Sony ZV-1 and it shows its size being super compact and like I mentioned before this camera is going to be uh it's going to be more like the ZV-1 than the uh, A6400 for example when it comes to size you can see right there that this camera may be actually made out of a uh, magnesium alloy and the reason why I'm determining this is because of the shine of the black paint uh, usually you know when the uh, camera is made out of plastic it's more matte and when the camera has some magnesium you know it has that type of finish so the next thing that I want to talk about is on the last uh, picture I thought that we were going to have a three capsule microphone from the ZV-1 and right over here you can clearly see that that is the case I'm zooming in and yes you know so that's going to be actually a really good add-on because none of the other cameras aside from the ZV-1 has that and I've used it before and when you are kind of like in this proximity to the camera the sound is actually pretty good pretty impressive and one thing that I would recommend is that you put that dead cat if you're going to be around because it picks up a lot of noise uh, wind noise you know really really quick this next thing is going to be the um, location of the um, hot shoe mount it's going to be located on the side kind of like it is right now on the zv1 and we don't have an evf so you know for the purpose of the camera i think that's a great call you know give us better microphone and no evf and give us actually a hot shoe mount that can actually accept most microphones that sony um, has for you know this type of system because on the ZV-1 there are a lot of microphones that don't work in the camera and I'm assuming that because this one is an APS-C camera and those microphones most microphones work on all the APS-C cameras it's not going to be the case so that's awesome right there now remember that we talked about the on off switch now all cameras until now have the on off switch around the shutter release but Sony has opted for putting a dedicated switch on top of the camera to turn it off it's still right around the grip so um, it's not on the opposite direction I like that decision but now around the shutter release button we are gonna have a zoom rocker for electronic zoom uh, and this camera is going to actually be um, offered with a 16 to 50 millimeters f 3.5 to 5.6 which to be honest with you is a cheap lens it's actually you know pretty fair you know it's not super fast 3.5 but at the same time you know it's super compact and the image quality is surprisingly good about this kit lens I think if you go and buy this kit lens alone you know you're gonna pay $117 $120 so I'm assuming that the version with a kit lens is gonna be maybe another $100 more now moving forward uh, we're gonna have the same movie record button inherited from this um, ZV-1 and also we have the C1 custom button at the top that's gonna be that instant bokeh mode that we also have in the Sony CV-1 now we can also see right there that we're gonna have an aperture control or you know to configure to whatever you want and that's actually a great call because the ZV-1 doesn't have one this one is gonna have that and last but not least at the top we're gonna have the mode button rather than you know the mode dial which you know for reasonings of uh, you know saving space Sony has gone with that now let's actually take a look at the port bay right here because finally Sony has departed from the micro USB and to me that's actually a big deal I've broken a few of them already um, I broke one in my Sony RX100 Mark 5 and that's it I never repaired it because I was like they're probably gonna charge me an arm and a leg so USB-C here much more sturdier great call most likely you're gonna be able to charge the camera while using it you also have a micro HDMI and the next thing that we can see here is that we have a headphone jack now that is going to be incredible because we're talking about a body that is almost uh, the same volume as the ZV-1 yet we have pretty much all the ports that we can ask for and at the top as you can see you can see the red little circle right there that is the um, microphone input even though you can actually use microphones that connect from the Hashimoto like I mentioned before now let's take a look at the next picture because this one right here you know gives us an idea of the grip you know the handling of the camera but also most importantly if we go and look at the next picture is the battery uh, compartment door 
And that battery compartment door, you know, at first I was like, wow, you know, probably this camera is going to have uh, uh, MPFZ100 battery, which is the big one, the ones that full frame cameras and the A6600 use. But then I actually went and took my A6400 and compared the battery compartment with a mount that gives me, you know, a relation of size. And I think that we're going to have the small battery right here, which is, you know, something that I mentioned before. Now, the battery life on the A6400 it's a little bit better, I think, that on the A6500. And Sony has kind of like improved their battery efficiency in their models. So I'm assuming, in some models, I'm assuming that probably this one is going to be a little bit more efficient and probably giving you, you know, a little bit over two hours of moving recording. And that's going to be really, really good. All right, so next picture right here on the back, as you can see, once again, now we can clearly see that the interface, nothing has changed. You know, we have the same D-pad and even the control seems to be labeled exactly the same thing as they are on an APS-C camera or the RX, you know, line. So that actually remains untouched. And also we can see the hinge, so we're going to have the flip out screen now. I don't think in this screen we're going to have the touchscreen capabilities like I mentioned before for several reasons. You know, Sony's not going to put that technology on an entry level, you know, camera entry level is almost $1,000, $900. But most likely Sony's going to reserve that for the next version and we may see an A7000 that's going to have, you know, all the bells and whistles that we've been asking for. So if they, you know, drop the new menus here and touchscreen functionality, I think this camera is going to cannibalize, you know, a lot of the other cameras, at least for, you know, video purposes. And last but not least, you have a picture of the camera from the top kind of laying flat on a table. And you can see right there, you know, also the uh, volume of the grip. Now, let me actually show you this picture, someone holding the camera. And as you can see, this one is going to be way much more comfortable to hold than a ZV-1 or any of the other, you know, RX line that didn't even have a grip before. And it reminds me a lot of the Sony A7C. And, um, you know, it's, you know, it's not going to be super, super comfortable, the most comfortable grip out there, but, you know, it gives you a good leverage. In this picture, you have a dead cat, and this is something that I recommend that you guys just leave it on the camera because if you're going to be filming video and taking advantage of the uh, three capsule microphone, uh, most of the time, even if you just wipe your hand, you start hearing that noise, you know, crippling in into the microphone. So I wouldn't remove it unless, you know, you're going to be taking pictures and now filming video. Otherwise, just leave it there. It's pretty light. And I can see that it also connects from the Hashu mount. So the Sony ZV-1 has been delayed, guys, already twice, apparently. And most likely, we may hear of this announcement some time next week or the following weeks but i'm assuming the sony probably is going to take a full month and wait for you know all the waters to come because if you're familiar with what happened is that apparently in some of the asian websites there was a little bit of an uproar because sony picked the same day that the uh, japan invaded china and you know the chinese population took that as an offense so you know i completely understand where they're coming from so guys let me know what you think about this camera are you trying to upgrade maybe from an A5000 or RX100 to this camera. And if you already have an APS-C camera, do you consider, you know, this camera, you know, a need to exist? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Take care.